Here we have my 2018 long-term bike, a super fancy, specialised S-Works Epic Hardtail. This bike comes from the mind of ex-Cannondale engineer and now specialised engineer Peter Denk. He's a carbon fibre whiz and the idea with this bike was to design the lightest bike possible without any sacrifice in strength or stiffness. Weighing this size large out of the box, it seems like that weight target has been achieved. This one weighed 8.7 kilos without pedals, chuck on a pair of XT pedals and you've got a 9 kilo bike that's just about ready to race. Now there are lighter bikes out there such as the Merida Big 9, but does all the carbon fibre wizardry in this one overshadow that small weight penalty? Before we get into how it rides, a quick rundown of the spec. This being an S-Works model means it's a top spec, no holds barred race machine. That means full SRAM Eagle group set, SRAM level ULT brakes, roval carbon wheels, and a nearly all carbon finishing kit. You also get a RockShox SID4 with specialized patent brain technology. There's also a neat little rubber stop on the down tube there, which basically prevents the forks or the bars from smashing into the top tube or the down tube. There are neater solutions out there, such as what Canyon and Trek do, but if that protects my bike when I have a nasty crash, it's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Compared to their previous top spec hardtail, Specialized have also tweaked the geometry on the new S-Works Epic to match the kind of current trends in XC geometry. And if you've listened to any bike radar reviews of late, you'll know exactly what I'm about to say. With XC courses getting gnarlier every year, Specialized have made the bike a touch slacker and a touch longer, just to make it a bit less twitchy on those kind of tougher descents. That means you've got a 69.8 degree head angle and a 441 mil reach in a size large. Now obviously that's not downhill levels of progressive geometry, but for an XC bike, that's on the kind of more trail friendly spectrum of geometry. You also get boost spacing front and rear and fairly wide tyres with a 2.3 on the front and a 2.1 on the back. Basically, it's got all the fashionable things that a mountain bike needs to have in 2018. So on paper, it looks great, but hype and a top spec sheet will only get you so far. And what we're more interested in is how it rides. Depending on where you sit on the love-hate specialised fence, you're either going to be extremely disappointed or extremely pleased with what I'm about to say. So here goes. This bike is a brilliant bike, albeit with a premium price tag. I've ridden plenty of top spec hardtails over the last few years, and while many have been really light or really comfortable or super stiff, I feel this does the best job of combining all three. It's plenty light, so you already know it's going to fly up the hills, there's no issues there. But that lightness is accompanied by a kind of dull give in the frame, which makes it a touch more comfortable than other super light hardtails I've ridden. An example of that, I rode the Merida Big 9 last year, which is equally light. But that bike has a more a kind of brittle twang to it, whereas this has a more dull give, and it just makes it more comfortable when you're thrashing out the saddle or giving it the beans up some climbs. Another bike which combines that kind of dull give with feathery lightweight is the Cannondale FSI, which also comes from the mind of Peter Deck. Obviously, comfort is no good if a bike can't back it up with stiffness, and the Epic has no problems there. This bike is plenty stiff without feeling overly harsh, and I didn't feel any kind of give in the bottom bracket when I was thrashing it out of the saddle up a hill or kind of tearing through some single track. I've already mentioned the relatively progressive geometry for XC, and this bike totally rips on gnarlier terrain. Granted, it isn't quite as sharp as XC bikes of old, but you just have to get used to kind of putting a bit more weight through the bars when you're throwing it into corners or round berms, and you're rewarded with a bike that just feels much more stable and forgiving when you're pushing it hard. The seat tube angle is 74 degrees, which is relatively steep for an XC bike. And this means you get a nice pedaling position when you're sitting down and you get able to get the power down without feeling too stretched out with that extended reach. Trail riders might think that a 441mm reach is relatively short, but when you combine that with the 100mm stem that comes on this bike, you do get quite a stretched out position. Moving on to the brain suspension. 
Now, if you're unfamiliar with specialised brain technology which comes on their forks, it's basically an automatic opening and closing of the compression circuit. What this means is that when you're pedalling along on some smooth terrain or up a climb, the fork is locked out and solid. Then when you hit a bump, it opens up that compression circuit and you get nice, smooth suspension. The sensitivity of the brain can also be adjusted so it can be nearly fully open so that it needs hardly any kind of knock to make it open up or it can be fully closed so you need quite a big impact to open up that compression circuit. Brain forks of old had this adjustment on the bottom of the forks which meant that once you're riding you basically had to stop to adjust it. Now they're on the top which means you can adjust them on the fly. Obviously adjusting the brain lockout on the fly kind of defeats the point of having an automatic lockout. If you're in an XC race I doubt you'll be kind of reaching down to adjust it but for marathon races where you might have a really long fire road climb it's quite handy that you can kind of fully lock it out for the climb and then open it all the way up for a long descent. The trade-off with the brain is that you get a kind of noticeable clunk when that compression circuit opens up. Does this slow you down? Is this a problem? It's hard to say. I got on well with the brain, I don't really mind it and you know it doesn't seem to slow down specialised pro racers. That being said, some people don't like it and it's something I'd recommend definitely trying before you buy if you're thinking about getting one of these bikes. As you can tell, I really like this bike, but there was a few things I wasn't quite as impressed with. First up is the saddle. Now this is a carbon saddle and it is seriously firm. What I've found when I'm sitting down and kind of pedaling through single track is that you just get a lot of feedback from the bike and from the trail and it just kind of smashes part of your body that you don't want smashing up basically. I prefer something with maybe a plastic base that has a bit more kind of give in the saddle and I think it'd just be a touch more comfortable and you know wouldn't cost you much in terms of weight. I've already had this bike for a few months and I'm pretty good at keeping it clean and well maintained but the stickers on the wheels are already starting to peel off. Now, if you own this bike and you paid full price for it, you would not be happy about those stickers coming off this early on. I'm sure that any specialised dealer will keep you in stickers for life, but still, it's not great, and I prefer the stickers to kind of be better, basically. Tyres are very much a personal preference, but I prefer to see something with a bit more shoulder tread than the fast tracks which come on this bike. I guess if you're lucky enough to live somewhere with year-round sun, this isn't going to be a problem, but for those of us that ride in wintry conditions, yeah, you want to be changing these tyres. Finally, it's the price. Being specialised and being their top spec model, this doesn't come cheap at £7,500. That's a hell of a lot of money, especially when you consider that you can get a similarly specced bike from a direct sales brand for maybe £2,000 cheaper. That being said, Specialized are backed up by a massive dealer network and this frame really is a stunner, both in terms of its looks and its performance. It's a super bike and it has that kind of super bike quality that every time you see it, you want to go and ride it. So is it worth the money? Well, that's up to you to decide. So there you have it. Specialized have made probably the best hardtail I've ever ridden. It's not cheap but it is an amazing ride. And come race day, if you're on this bike, you're gonna have no excuses. I'm gonna be riding and racing this bike throughout the 2018 season, so keep an eye out on Bike Radar to see how I get on.